system members of the information family ministers of government here present madam chair and members of the asset recovery and property retrieval tax pool distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press before i go into my statement for the press I will formally interview the members of this all important topic. And as I do the introduction, I will expect every member to understand from the rest of the statement. Man, my Reverend City Vice Chair, Mr. Ellis Coffey, who is not here, is a member of the board. Mr. Martin Polly, also not here. Mr. Ahmed Dempster, member. Honorable um, Emmanuel Bungwe. Dr. Reading B. Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Angel Andrew. Ms. Rivera Melissa. Mosima. Mr. George Wool, Mr. John Bobad Billy, Mr. Trocon Martin Allen, no high representative from uh, the Ministry of the Ministry of Justice, and also representative from uh, the General Services Agency. Thank you. On behalf of the Asset Recovery and Property Retrieval Tax Board, I want to use this medium to express gratitude to the Honorable Minister of Information for the opportunity for the to give our first major press briefing since the announcement of Executive Order Number 126 and our appointment to this national board by the President, His Excellency. Our ministers of government, their present distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press. We, con we consider this responsibility as a national cause on ground that this is a symbol of national preparedness by the president to declare war on corruption and to restore hope for the Liberian people by retrieving stolen access that were directed to private use by employees and former officials. The purpose of this executive order is to open a new chapter for good governance and accountability. The path of good governance and accountability is the paradox on which civilizations of the world are built. Civilizations are nations that are built on the tenets of democracy, good governance, accountability, and so on. Unlike civilization, corrupt nations are vultures that destroy the existence of the state in this country. The negative results of corrupt nations are abject poverty, poor health care delivery programs, one of development, bar rules, poor educational programs, and bar salaries for the employees of the system. Our ministers and distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press. Liberia as a nation state has been victimized by by governance, corruption, and theft for the tax. Evidence of these are policy with massive underdevelopment and hardship. The pronouncement of executive order number one is a redemption for the people of Liberia and their state from the slavery of corruption, theft, and bad governance. This is an indication that Liberia is gravitating to the expectations of the world where the tenets of democracy, good governance, accountability, and the rule of law are key initiatives for international revenue. Today, the asset recovery and property retrieval tax rules have been fully constituted, commissioned, and charged with the power to perform its duties and responsibilities in line with the rule of law and without fear or fear. We consider this charge as a national responsibility, and by this, it is anticipated of us 
to perform to the expectations of the Liberian people in that of the economy. We compose this as an opportunity to be the first tax force under this government with the power and responsibility to follow colonial actors and retrieve properties from employees, common officials, and private individuals who obtain same true illegal means. We pledge to the people of Liberia and this government that we will perform fair responsibility to its maximum. In concert with the law, we will be fearless, robust, drastic, and strong. In execution of our duties, no question or question. That's why this or more formal portfolio will be exempted, as the full weight of the law will not be selected in its application. I will release some distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press. To hit the ground running, the tax law has commenced the process of property retrieval from employees, private individuals, and part of future government who illegally obtain them. Once they use this location to call all agencies, ministries, corporations that we have contacted to submit even trace of property that we have selected for retrieval. We also want to use the medium to caution employees, private individuals, and former officials of government who are in position of possession of government properties to surrender them to the tax rules. On this note, the tax rules is granting 10 days grace period commencing March 22nd to March 31st, 2024, to those mentioned super, to voluntarily surrender all state properties to avoid unspecified legal action. Meanwhile, the tax will want to call on all garages that are currently in the habit of teaching columns, being a such number of government vehicles to immediately disease. The tax will have gotten intelligence of those garages involved in said criminal acts. On the issue of asset recovery, which is the second phase of our work, this portion of our responsibility borders on financial crime and corruption investigation. Our financial crime investigators are currently reviewing reports and other information that are through our intelligence on theft and corruption of government assets. These reports and intelligence will be investigated and thereafter proceeds of those crimes that were converted into liquid and fixed assets, both in Liberia and outside Liberia, by private individuals who transacted in bad business deals with government and former official government to be legally confiscated through the post of confiscation. We are calling on the public to assist the tax code with all relevant intelligence and information. Your name and identity will be protected. We can be reached by the following means. Liberia, asset recovery at gmail.com. WhatsApp, plus 231-880-358205. Plus 231-778-611-836. Our Minister of Government and Distinguished Ladies and General of the Press, let me clarify that this is not a wish hunt for any particular group. Our recovery and retrieval processes will be based on the unquoted evidence. No one will be falsely incriminated on the basis of political attribution. The legal chain of custody will be our guiding tool to establish the magnitude of our investigation. Meanwhile, in line with our duties and responsibilities, the tax code will soon release the names of persons of interest that will be placed on the essay Republican. These persons of interest have been captured in our major, as our major suspects in our financial crime and corruption investigation. The tax code is also aware of the illegal movement of liquid assets and is currently working with its intelligence to trace the domestic and international location of those criminal assets. I'll be it. We are calling on a joint security and our bureau borders to remain vigilant. To conclude, I'm calling on the Liberian people to assess this national endeavor. This initiative has set the stage for Liberian to regain its dignity and reputation in the international community. Thank you very much.
So there you have it from the asset recovery team here at the Major Information Order Affairs and Tourism. Chairperson. At this juncture, I'd like to invite the executive director of the National Disaster Management Agency, Nancy Dolly, to join us now. So at this point, I Ladies and gentlemen, the MDMA early warning alert for windstorm floor and coastal erosion. On Saturday, March 16, 2024, reports from Bakuru, Bon County, Bon and Nima County show that windstorms have caused widespread damages to 298 homes, wandering over a thousand people homeless. The government of Liberia, through the National Disaster Management Agency, dispatched a team of respondents to work along with local authorities in this county to ascertain the gravity of the situation. The team observed in Wiswa Town, Bakuru, Jamplin, Gaimu, and Peter in Bon County, and Zoblebo in Nima County, several of whom were entirely or partially destroyed as a result of heavy windstorm, leaving many, especially women and children, homeless. Available data from Bakuru shows that out of 101 homes, 52 have been badly damaged, while 49 were partially damaged. The total number of affected persons stands at 769 in Bakuru County. In Bon County, records indicate that out of 82 homes, 45 have been badly damaged, while 37 were partially damaged. Nima County reports that out of 37 affected structures, two have been entirely destroyed, with a 14-year-old girl sustaining severe injury. And the number of people affected stays at 268 in Nima County. In total, it can be established that 1,863 people were affected with two persons sustaining zero injuries in those counties. Our investigation also reveals that the windstorm also devastated four critical structures. Efforts are being made by the government through the National Disaster Management Agency to address the humanitarian needs of affected population. The President, His Excellency Joseph Numa Bwake, remains committed to supporting initiatives that will seek to keep Liberians safe against natural and human induced hazard. The National Disaster Management Agency wants to state this as an early warning that based on the World Bank Group Climate Breaks Profile 2024, 24 for Liberia, predicting that rainfall pattern this year will increase extremely accompanied by windstorm and the one meter sea level rise, which are expected to cause to pose future health hazard related to floor impacts, agriculture use, disease outbreak, critical infrastructure for water, sanitation, hygiene, and may well as lead to human injuries and the loss of life. The public is advised to be alert. Venerable communities along the coast of Liberia are advised to also be alert for coastal erosion as a result of rising sea levels. Based on these scientific information, 
It is predicted that over 100,000 persons are expected to fall free to fall, wisdom, and coastal erosion this year. With over Uh, Mr. President, Diamond Slanger for Spoon FM. Yeah. Um, the speech caused a, a lot of uproar in Liberia, especially with the portion that had to do with the war crimes court where you mm. made Liberia's case. What should Liberians expect from that particular portion? But of the I, I, it's all, I just, I just stayed there. I don't understand what you want. Since we came to power, I have not one day called for war crime court. You, the journalist, call for war crime court. Liberians are calling for war crime court. Both the victims and the perpetrators are calling for a war crime court. What I did is to explain to them why now. So if you don't understand my English, then you need to go back to the speech and then you read it well. Yes. You calling for a war crime court, I say now why this time? <laughs> when we have an economic issue, we're trying to develop our country, why focus on the war crime court now? Why you did, you did not focus on it? 12 years ago. Yes. And those people that were part of the entire process of what happened to us, they left the 12 years. So what now? Is that what you want? I am saying here that those who support the continuation of the 24 year where we have in peace, I support such people. You can blow me, I blow you in a personal thing. But when you support 24 years of peace and its continuation to allow our children and those unborn for their mother to deliver them peacefully on a conducive atmosphere where investors will get attracted to come and invest and put food on the people's table, I stand by you. But if people who just got elected, that we went on the ground to do it, Everything we could in our weekdays, spend our own money, our vehicles there are all down because of that. If you can prioritize a uh, work on coal, asset recovery, this one at the early stage. The question would be what about the largest international country? It was the time to do what they wanted to do. The truth of Kenya was the largest truth ever in Africa for this. Spoon will not tell you what is happening in Liberia. Spoon will not tell you what is happening in Morovia. Well, again, folks, I'd like to say welcome. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for being here with us for another edition of the program. The late night show, the late night politics on Spoon is uh, is where we come with diverse views, highlighting the trending national issues. I'd like to say welcome to the show and to all of you across the world, our folks on across the internet, on radio. It's always a pleasure coming up here and having these engagements because it plays a pivotal role in the democratic process, the new Liberia that every single Liberian wants to see. And so I'd like to say welcome again. Thanks for joining us here tonight. My name is Nelson Collette. Um, and of course, uh, thanks to the many folks in the comment section, those of you always coming on, making sure that you're here. So we talk about uh, the issues. And um, welcome to everyone here tonight. Um, let me say thanks to um, our folks here tonight. It's going to be a great show. We're not going to be here long. Uh, yes, we don't have time much on our side but again it's a good thing that we're here thanks for being here with us tonight uh let me just go across the table and bring on the guys um and let me bring the team on uh make on i want to say thanks for joining us tonight it's good to have you on the show thank you so much Nancy. my pleasure to be here tonight okay, okay so um Yes, I see Bila. Bila is trying to come on, but uh, there's a little bit of issue with his uh, gadget. I hope he can have that sorted out. 
uh, once you can do that, then we will have Vida coming on tonight. But it's a good thing um, to be here to kickstart another show. Um, lots of things happening in the country. Mm -hmm. Too many yeah. things all at the same time. I want you to just do your opening um, quickly as we try to... Vida, are you with us? Vida, can you hear me? Yes, I'm here, Nazim. It's a pleasure. Okay. I can hear you very clear. Are you getting okay. me? Hello, Vida. You all right? I can hear you. I can hear you. Now, we want to open the floor tonight. Yeah. Um, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me provide the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Let me provide the opportunity for a few of our folks joining us in the coming session to join the conversation tonight. Uh, let me provide the opportunity for some folks in the coming session to join us tonight. Um, we're not going to be here long. It's going to be a great show. Um, we have a guest coming on. Uh, I, I just I, I look forward to you know establishing the contacts. Uh, once we do that, we will have him coming on here very shortly. Yeah, so um, again, a welcome to everyone. Uh, I see lots of folks here. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I've dropped a link there in the comment section. I see uh, uh, Tapo Walker. Thanks for joining us tonight. Christine Sir Leave, uh, thanks for being here. And I see so many folks here tonight. Valerie Johnson, thanks for joining us. Edwin Zobon, thanks for being here. We appreciate you tonight. Uh, Bobby Zina White, thanks for joining us. And to all the folks, man, um, I know from the onset of the broadcast, there was a little bit of issue uh, with the um, with the audio, yes, but it's a good thing that we're back on. And um, I just want us to do our opening quickly. Lots of things happening in the country. Uh, let me just uh, let me just go on this. Okay, just do your opening as I try to bring in some of the training issues quickly. Then we we'll go into the show. Well, so let, let's let's start with you. Let's start with you, um, Mikael, and then uh, we. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. And thank you for watching the show. Thank you, Liberians. Thank you for people all across the world for coming on here for us to make a case together. First of all, there's a lot of things that are going on in Liberia right now. Some like who, some still trying to start development is starting and the government just got into place and they're getting things done. So I just want to say Liberia is for every one of us that fight for our country. Not for, for the betterment of our country. What all we got going on there, we're not doing it for one particular person. We're doing it for the betterment of Liberia. And as Liberians, you know, there's a lot to be done in our country. And yeah. I was listening to school earlier. There were a lot of things being discussed. They brought on the assets recovery team leader. And they were asking him a lot of questions. And one thing that stood front to me is, you know, they were talking about the statue of, uh, statue of, uh, of how you call it? Limitation. Uh, limitations when it comes to the other okay. thing going back to any time. But my question to them is, if that thing is a barrier to, you know, holding people accountable, why we can't get rid of it, at least to go back to Judy Brand in time, Ellen time, you know, coming back to El or, or, or George Real time. You know, I mean, for now, what they have on hand is what they're working with because of the study of limitations. And so, okay. you know, so we that much we can't say until... They can go back and amend the law and get rid of that because that is like almost like a barrier. When they were asking the guy Thank to you. pay, he said they couldn't go farther back when George Red time because there was study of limitation and most of the guy out there just walk away scot free. So I think we need to think about that, talk about that, and see what we can do with it. So at least we can. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mikael. Um, we 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 have that on the plate as well. Uh, we're gonna roll over all of these discussions uh, very quickly. Bila, let's see what's on your mind quickly. Rudolph, welcome to the show. It's good to have you on tonight. Yeah, thank you, Nelson. It's good to be back. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you so much. And I want to say hi to each and everyone, Rudolph. Uh, my good friend, Better. Um, sorry for the when I'm not getting the pronunciation. I'm saying Mikael. 
-hmm. And to everywhere many librarians, I think what is on my mind is a training, a very progressive training national issues as it relates to seeing the structure of a government. I think we are about to witness an, um, a desired government that will come to, to actually liberate the people that can actually speak to some of the things that you've been seeing. We'll see a structure, ministry of information, wherein information is not being given by one individual. All sectors are invited to, to get their basis out of whatsoever progress that they have made. I think that's show a light of government. And I think uh, the, the recent meeting here presided over the presided over by the commander in chief, which is Ambassador George uh, Joseph Yumabwaka, speaks volume to um, a, a, prog a progress in the sectors of security, wherein you when we observed that meeting, there were so many advices given to everyone who served in government. And uh, he talked about people should work diligently and forget about uh, making government look like uh, we're in a party regime. But let's look at from the administrative aspect. I think uh, that's a very good thing. And we, what we want to say as I close on is each appointment that has been done at the end of the letter of appointment or at the end of that publicity that can always be done on the e marshall page, they will always tell you work with diligence and work for your people. I think that speaks volume and everywhere many government officials, whether you save or seven, whether you employ by government, whether you're working at the way of pleasure of the of the president, please go by those various things and remember that you are there for a lesser time. Six years is not far. Thank you very much, Nathan. Thank you. Let's hear from Rudolph. Rudolph, quickly, what's in your mind, your opinion? Yeah, uh, good evening to all of you in studio and good uh, evening and good morning to our, our list, listeners. As always, what is on my mind is the issue of the Liberian people. And I look forward to having a good show, Nelson. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thanks a lot, Rudolph. And um, well, lots of things happening. Um, and uh, you know, I, I just I just want us to take on from this 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 issue with the the recovery, the asset recovery, as we uh, move on to other issues. Um, with two months in office, again, I would like to start on this note. With two months in office, the Boakai administration, the unit part of government has embarked on so many activities. Now, I, I, I want us to have a fair evaluation of the Unity Party administration here. A fair evaluation, very honest evaluation, regardless of the political side or the political affiliation or whatever. Uh, a very objective evaluation as a Liberian, a patriotic citizen of this country. On the 22nd of January, we saw the, the president soon, soon in, took the oath, oath, oath of office. And um, the United Party has another opportunity to steer the affairs of the country for six years. Well, this was the beginning of another, um, another um, a term. And let me put it that way. Uh, you know, there's something... Uh, but, but this this was a whole new beginning. A lot of people were very optimistic of a smooth administration, a government that would have done well, or a government that would do well, while others from a distance saw that, you know, this was just a group of people who left power, they were voted out, and they needed another opportunity to make a comeback to get their jobs. It's been two months. Let's make a fair evaluation of the unity party government. Now, I want some of the CDC guys to join us here tonight uh, because at the end of the day, it's about the country, it's about where we are, you know, and all of that. Um, there's administration in two months, in two months, 
have seen, have, have done um, lots of appointments. They have been appointments from different angles. But when it comes to the fight against corruption, you have the asset recovery team that has been set in motion. Exactly order 126. The, 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 the whole idea of the asset recovery team is something to go into. There, there are disagreements with respect to what they can or cannot do, um, especially from folks who are in the opposition block. On the flip side, the president has mandated uh, the, the GSC to audit the very place where he seated his office, the Ministry of State for Presidential Affairs. He has called on the GSC to audit that entire place. And in fact, the GSC is saying that since, in fact, this place has not been audited for a long time, we're going to do a system audit. And since it is at the feet of the president, we're going to take a look at the entire system and see, be able to figure out what has gone wrong. Why this is going on, you have the World Economic Crimes Court issue on the table. Resolution is, 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 is carried at the, law, the, the, the legislature. A decision is made. The lawmakers voted unanimously, overwhelmingly, at the, at the, at the, at the House of Representatives. Now it's on the floor of the Senate. Now, I was just going through something uh, where I saw, uh, uh, I, was, I was going through something, and I saw the, uh, the, 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 the U.S. ambassador. There was an open letter to Liberians from the U.S. ambassador at large uh, for global uh, criminal justice, Yvette Van uh, and she did a very good communication, telling Liberians about the importance of war crimes court, employing the Black administration, and 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 mm -hmm. stressing the need for stressing. Yeah, please mute. Uh, can you mute? It's, it's one thing to cut your camera off, but you have to mute. So, uh, highlighting the milestone, the decision from the government. Uh, to carry on, um, uh, uh, um, um, to, to, to have this resolution passed in the House of Representatives. The progress being made so far, appreciating, and telling Liberians in that open communication she wrote that no single Liberian should be afraid of coming forward to speak or to say what they know about this issue because they are going to be protected. The U.S. government is watching keenly from a distance and they are going to make sure that this process is guarded, uh, guarded and that every single person who wants to come, step forward, and speak out will be protected. Now, this is all happening in the first two months. In the same first two months, we have the issue of price control. The issue of price control. Ministry of Commerce says the price of a 25 kg rice has been dropped uh, uh, 25 cents have been removed from the price of 25 kg rice. Well, you go to the market, it's a whole different story. You see the complete contrary. In the first two months, the exchange rate has increased. In the first two months. Now, about two months ago, the exchange rate was at 180 Liberian dollars. Uh, 182, 3 Liberian dollars to one USD. But right now, the exchange rate stands at 194 Liberian dollars to one USD. On the flip side, you know, th 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 there are some challenges, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and you can go on naming and talking about those issues. But I, I want us to make a fair analysis of the Boaca administration in two months. Two months of leadership, two months of the Liberian people entrusting the rescue to steer the affairs of the country. The budget. Some big hands at the legislature today went to the executive mansion, expressing frustration, disappointment over the cut. You know that 
the the budget in the previous budget year was for them was uh, some 60 uh 67 million that's cut to 38 million they express serious frustration so i, I want us to have make, make some 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 objective analysis around the black High administration right here let's start with you rudolph and then we're gonna go up yes uh <clears throat> once more good evening you know nelson um based on what we were promised in the first 100 days because i mean if you are asking us to give you an analysis it comes in two fold right like are we going to be be analyzing the performance of, the, of this government based on what we anticipated or based on what we were promised based on anticipation based on the promises the anticipation i wanted to do a, a full analysis of it uh, you you're gonna have two minutes you're gonna have two minutes to do that you could do a, a full analysis of it the you promises know, that were made comparing it to your expectation it's, it's one thing it's one thing for somebody to tell you i will give you xyz tomorrow morning it's another thing for to to, to have an expectation there are, yep. so, there are some people when they tell you they will do their thing, you say, forget that thing. <laughs> you don't have an expectation because uh, there's, there's no sign. There's absolutely no uh, trust in what the person says. So let's yeah. let's so, there. Nelson, I'm going to start with, with what was promised to us. Yeah. This this government, uh, when you, you go back to the 100 days delivery document, mm -hmm. It's a document that has 12 objectives to be met within the 100 days. Uh -huh. they, touch, they touch on drug, they touch on corruption, they touch on tourism, uh, they touch on, on um, they, yeah, they, they, there, were, there were lots of things touch on, lots, lots of crucial things. And most important, most important of all, it was road because the president kept saying road, 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 and road, right? So Nelson, based on that promise that was made, I would tell you that from what we are seeing, right? Because let me just go line by line, right? When you look at the issue of corruption, we see that this government has already waged war against corruption. The whole thing about the asset recovery that's a serious war against corruption and we see how serious the president has been on that we we all on this app we we came on this show we watched the meeting when we we saw how how serious he was we saw how passionate he was about fighting corruption he told his foot soldiers what needs to be done so we so for that that's a passing mark nelson i would give like that's like 10 out of 10 or already within the first 100 days and then he talked about drug within the, the last regime we saw that our country was a hub for drug passage and distribution across africa we saw that the last government seized drug war 100 million and before we look in a few weeks the the the, the people who brought a drug, they were let go free of charge. We don't know what it did with, with those drugs. We don't know if, 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 if it was given back or if it was used by who or whatever, we do not know. So, but then with, when this government came, Nelson, within the first one or two weeks of the LDEA bus working, we saw him arresting drug on live camera. We saw him going, going to places that we had Nigerians and other foreigners who were importing drugs into the country. We saw him getting them. And, 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 and so, Nelson, that is a fight against drug. That is another promise kept. We look at, um, uh, what's the thing? Uh, tourism, right? And, and this is where I like to... To, I like, like to go in depth, Nelson, because a lot of those those objectives, the, no, no, 
the government did not say that we are like we are, are going to change everything. No, there were. Ay, please. I'm sorry, my son is this is disturbing me. The government did not promise that they are going to change everything within those sectors. What they were talking about is with with is reviewing all documents and making sure that that moving forward. Yeah. Will... So. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 just take twenty uh twenty. Let's say twenty. No, Nelson, I am still on the. Promise because no, because Nelson, if you want us to, to analyze this, no, thing, it's, 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 it's important. We, we, we're gonna, we we're gonna, 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 gonna yeah, you, you, you had two minutes, you had two minutes, and um, okay, we want I will just wrap up real quick. This in time. We have so all Nelson, issues we'll when it on. comes to the promise made, yeah, hmm? mm. this this government is doing great. I will, doing great. Them, I will, I will grade them 80 percent, okay, but so then, uh, when it comes to our expectation. Right, mm. because we all saw JMB to be the rescue father. Yeah, we, I mean, we have immense level of trust in him. We saw him as somebody who is going to to deliver. But then there is one thing to overly expect. Right, we have just gone two months. There are, are people who are expecting to see the U.S. rate drop to to drop to to eighty. Want to see rice price drop to ten dollars? And wants to see a lot of things happening on a fast pace. We like that ourselves, but that's just wishful thinking. You, you cannot think like that. So expectation, the expectation, mm -hmm. in terms of expectation. Yeah. Uh, what your expectation? What that expectation was that uh, you built over do, do, during the campaign period? My is expectation that is that Nelson. My expectation was that within the the first two years. Of JMB's regime, we will start to experience a different Liberia, a new Liberia. Thank you. We will start to to ex, ex, we will start to experience a rise in employment. And that's a great point right there. Uh, but but let's let's come back a little. I, I'm going to move to be that next. But let's come back a little. Given what you've seen in two months, yeah. What does it say? When the Christmas, so Nelson, a lot of people say when the Christmas will be good, you will know from the Eve. The Eve is good. That's what I would, would, would tell you. The Eve okay, is good. Okay, so, so what is that area you think the government um, have performed very well in just two months? Yeah, fight Nelson, against corruption. I'm coming. Fight against corruption, yeah. the economy, and uh, maybe you talk about security and you talk about health. The fight against corruption, the economy, security, Sanitation. and health. Okay. Now, see, the government has overly performed when it comes to fighting corruption in this short period of time. The, the government has overly performed when it comes to fighting the issue of drug. The okay. government has so, 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 so let's hold you there. Let's hold you there and bring in Bila. Because I know you want to you, you you take another five minutes to do this one. But, but Bila, let's hear your take on this one. As a Liberian, political party aside, what's your honest analysis of the workings of the government? Two months. It's been two solid months. Well, thank you, Mezin, once more. And I want us to register that when we drain this government in two months, I think we, look, we should look at stage or stages of achievement. Mm -hmm. um, because when you green a two month old baby, uh, that greeting should not be like a six year or so many years greeting. What do I mean by this? If you look at the Buaka administration, like I huh. said, the Buaka administration is not a regime like George we are from my opening. It is the administration. Huh. Because administration is quite different from the regime. A regime is based is run on the basis of of not going not abiding by rules, not looking at administrative proceeding, but rather running the government like a political party that which we observe. So I want to say this: you asked a very critical and very unique question. You talk about health, you talk about security, you talk about other sectors in government. I want to tell you. Like my brother Rudolph said, the government of Liberia 
headed by Ambassador Joseph Juma Boaga, has done a tremendous work in terms of corruption. Someone will say, what do you mean by tremendous work? If you look at basic things that tackles in 14 corruption, it speaks volume. You talk about the asset recovery thing. You talk about a process uh, as regards to the work and code. You talk about other things, business ministry, even the very ministry he found himself in. And Metine, but the head of LACC told us in his relief that it has been a time over period that that ministry has not been audited because yeah. past government or people who come into that ministry as a head or president, there has not been concerned about that ministry. And they can always say, before you, they say one who comes with clients must stand, but one who speaks equity must come with clean hands, right? Before you say this ministry should be audited, I think your ministry should be well audited. Let people know that you're free from corruption. Then before you tackle other ministries, that is the no. progress. Okay. In terms of fighting corruption, and these are basic things. We talk about health. I can't speak volume to that too much. I don't know okay. whether some of the progress, if there is progress, I'm not aware of that. You talk, about the the issues of, you talk about the issues of you talk about the issues of um, security. Rice flour being reduced and we're looking at basic commodity coming down a certain level. What I want to speak to us from a very honest and object, objective view is, nothing. you are not, you're not sitting on the platform, you tell me this press has come down and the issues of implementation. I mean, the monetary hands of those various ministries has not been proactive. If you see this price of social oh, okay. so, so, so let's, let's take for example, okay. since let's go into the ministries yeah. and agencies, take, take yeah. for example, the Ministry of Commerce, yeah made a pronouncement with respect right. to a cut in the price of 25 kg rice 25 right. cents was reduced was removed right. but if you went to the market it's not reflecting what is where it coming from contrary is the contrary you talk about the lprc yep. petroleum prices similar thing so uh, and, and it's a good thing that you go into the ministries, uh, and, and I just want you to end up there so we bring in um, we bring in Mikhail. Sure, like I was saying, it is very unique to bring a price down of this, and we appreciate the government of it. But let's look at those who work in the very position. You have to be proactive. You cannot you can't think that it's in the form of undermining a government that wanting to make progress because if you're talking about I've, I've, if I had an inspector, you should be more proactive in ensuring that the basis law that got uh, regulations of, of people not going escalate, escalating process should be implemented by getting very just the justice ministry and all authority, authoritative arm of government doing your work very uniquely so people can actually see the realistic aspect of it. But in the aspect of getting the government, the government is doing work. Uh, that is impressive. You talk about expectation. I don't want us to agree our expectation too hard for me. If I, if you ask me, I didn't have too many high expectations in terms of government making certain progress overnight because okay. this government inheriting a rotten system. The government left uh, um, predecessors, we can say in a funny manner, they were not governing, but rather they were running. If you're not governing and running a country, it's quite different from getting certain expectations your predecessors are going to have. Because the Boca administrations come with a lot of expectations from people who do not know how the CDT led government was like. But again, should we take that as an excuse? No. Thank you. Can we do better for those things that we have to do? Yes. I mean, the government is doing tremendous work in terms of different sectors. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let, let's hold you there. Uh, Mikael, let's end up with you on this one. <clears throat> well, thank you again, Nelson. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to make my point on this. Uh, but you know, uh, one thing that we hold constants in Liberia is, or the government constants is, Joseph Bogai, this is not his first time in government. And Joseph Bogai, we have high expectations of him. Mm -hmm. Also, having said that, 
you know, when snake have bite you before, when when you see rope in the night, the way we jump, I mean, you know, I'm gonna be here another snake is there because we are afraid. I mean, I, I mean that to say, we Liberian people been hurt. We've been let down all through our history. You know, look at the whole scope of the Joseph Baga government in the, in, the, in the last two months. I think they are targeting too many things, in, you know, in short period of time. Number one, our country, Liberia as a country, don't have a system. Okay. But it's some of the things Joseph Baga had to be looking at. What, what would be some of his legacy when he leave power tomorrow? Will he build a system for us that will look back and see what? I mean, Joseph Boyga, six year in power in Liberia or 12 years in power in Liberia, we can point to something. There was a system built under him. There was something done under him. But like my brother said, when Christmas is going to be good, you, you know it from the eve. Joseph Boyga appointment alone, just few appointments, you know, very ministry, one of the mm. greatest places. It yeah. can tell you that the government, if they continue on the path they own, they're going to achieve something. And on the other hand, Liberian people will not realize some of the changes because we've been hurt too long. So every little thing will trickle us. Every little thing will trickle us in the negative directions. It won't be positive right now. So Joseph Barker then should be ready for the critics of people saying, oh, the government doing this. Oh, the government not doing this. So they gotta be ready. So, to so, so you as an individual, as a yes. Liberian, as mm -hmm. a Liberian, what can you say about the 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 the, the workings of the government? Two months now. It's like been I, two I mean, that, that's what I stated earlier. Joseph Burger is targeting too many things as, as in some period of time, and he even had time to do those. But as an individual, my expectation of this government that I supported. You know, to work for the Liberian people, mm -hmm. I think they started right. I would say okay. that they are, they are starting on a good page. Yes, they are starting they on a good page. They're going to make uh, some, 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 some great impact. Right, but, right. Uh, at the moment, at the moment, you think yes. they, they, they taking a there's whole lot. There's too many things to be looking at right now. Okay. Yes. So, and, uh, and, 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 and that's a great one. Let, let's come to the asset recovery a bit. You so, listen to well, I didn't go to uh, let's I even go to one minute or two minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you want to take uh, 10 seconds to conclude. Okay, okay. Having said that, man, you know, mm -hmm. but like I said, we have a lot of things to work on in Liberia. You understand? We always tell the people they should lower our they should lower their, lower lower their expectations. expectations. We yeah. should not lower, I mean we should lower our expectation in, in a polite manner. That this government is well experienced government. We've been the people been there, they have done it, and they will do good things for the Liberian people. It might take Thank a slow you. pace, but we're gonna get there with what I look at right now, just from an you know, individual standpoint or view on this. And this is very important. Um, uh, I want to go back a little to something that was said today. The head of the asset recovery team, Councillor Martin made a very important comment. Number one, he said they will be fearless in going after government assets. But most importantly, he said they have names already. They have individuals enlisted already. What did he say? 20 names? They have 20 names already. We're not talking about one, two, three persons here. No, 20 names already down. The asset recovery team took over. It's been less than three weeks. Executive order number uh, 126 was issued just about, uh, about two weeks ago. Asset recovery team was commissioned the next day. Another day we saw progress was being made gradually. But in less time, they are saying that they have 20 names already. Not just that, but in the coming days, the asset recovery team, working closely with the state security, they are going to come up with uh, a travel, uh, travel ban 
on some of the individuals who have been enlisted. He also called on the security uh, personnel at the borders and all of those places to be vigilant because some of the people there are on our list. They will not leave the country here in the soonest possible time. Now, let's talk about this process. Who are those that are being enlisted? Well, as it stands, the asset recovery team is being tight lipped on that aspect. Maybe that information isn't mature yet. What what is it going to what sort of message is it going to send out at this very stage? Is there any possibility of this process going on, rolling out smoothly, without the whole allegation of witch hunt? When you listen to folks from other opposition blocks, they will welcome the issue of war crimes court. They will welcome other things that the government is doing. But when it comes to the asset recovery team, they say that the team in the first place does not have the authority, legal authority, to carry on this action. Now, now, now let's let's hear your take on this this recent pronouncement. Twenty names. Some of those individuals are about to be stopped. The next thing is their assets. Those individuals once investigated, so the properties again, they will be taken away from them. Now, let, let let's start with you, uh, Rudolph, on this one. You know, I would say this is one of the easiest jobs to be done in a serious country. Because Nelson, the thing is, I mean, is I feel like it's just simple. Because, okay, if we knew you six years ago, we knew that you were renting one bedroom in, in someone's house. And then within six years, you have built for yourself something luxurious, something called hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's easy. We're gonna look at your pay. Maybe you were you were you were getting paid three thousand dollars per month, right? We, uh -huh. we, so we take your house value or whatever stuff you got. We take the value, put it down, and tell you exactly how much you were making per month. You tell us, and we and we go and check the rec the records to verify, and we just add it up. Within six years, even if, if we say you put in all your money, because of course you have to feed your your family. But if you tell if you if you tell us I put all the money on the house, we say fine. Calculate it. Within six years, this money and this house value. But 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 rule of in, in the first place, is Iberia <laughs> ready for this? Because as I as I sit here just listening, going through everything about the asset recovery team, I see something similar to that of this whole war crime school thing. You remember when the issue was 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 raised and and all of that one of the persons whose name have been mentioned repeatedly whenever we talk about war crimes although he's not the only person there are lots of them dozens of them but senator prince johnson said security wise we're not prepared for it senator yahya nimle says security wise we're not prepared for it it's liberia as a country ready for asset recovery we saw the started this Nothing. process it failed in no time. It failed miserably. Given all of the processes leading to re retrieving assets, it's like you are ready for it. Nelson, here is it, right? Hmm. And when you and when you you ask the, the question and you didn't go back to to, to Mr. We are time when they failed. Mm -hmm. The reason I mean, so the so the reason they failed it was simple. They were not intentional. Here is it. They so they are thinking was. You know, if we try to, to order the people in there, yeah. and then at what time pass the count, they will order or two so that we let them go. That was their thinking. Because they because they know or they knew the intention with which they came to government. Mm. Right? That was why they did not do it. Because they were trying to, to also amass wealth for themselves, which they did. But now we have a government under JNB, a serious man that old man. Who has a clean character within governance? No tint of corruption on him. Why is he afraid of? So, so now, so, so, yeah, so at first we had a we had a government who said this thing to bluff, and yeah. now we have one 
who was intentional about it. That's the yeah, difference. Yeah, and, 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 and I know you're talking about the aspect of uh, the will from yeah. the government to do it. Yeah. But now let's let's look at security. Let's Nelson, look at security. Nelson, because Nelson. we are at the stage where even the, the, the head of the re recovery team, Councilor Martin, is saying that, look, at the point of entry, the borders, the security personnel need to be on top of that game. Yeah. They need to stop some of those individuals as immediately as we announce the names, the 20 persons who have been enlisted just for a start. As we announce the names of those people, they will be prevented from, from, from leaving the country. I think they are wasting time. Are we ready security-wise for this? You know, Nelson, yes, I would say we are. Nelson, it will be hard, right? But no country enjoys development or prosperity without going through these tough decisions. There will be, I mean, there, of course, there are people who are, are still powerful and they are going mm. to be on that list. They yeah. will attempt to cause chaos. But now, La like, Rembrandt is stupid. And, and, and that's, people... that's the part. That's the aspect right there. Rudolph, finally, we're going to move to Bella. Be uh, but, but that's the aspect right there, chaos. Yeah, but let me just address that. Because, that because quick. like you said, some of those individuals are still influential. Yeah. They're still but, very powerful. But Nelson, with the assets they acquired, uh, whichever way from whichever administration, you know, assets gives you some sort of control. Nelson, that, so did so, Nelson. There is one thing that JMB has done so well. Yeah, JMB has has earned the trust from the public, from the people right so hmm. now it's just a matter of, of of how you will communicate your vision right yeah is, he is saying that we are taking those money that was were sold off from you the people to put back or to give back to you the people right so whoever is inf influential or not nelson the people know what they want now the people know that they have been stolen from and they want their resources back so I don't think they will withdraw these guys to cause chaos for their own country because this is going to benefit them, not not JMB. For example, if we we seize Mister, we have forty nine condominiums and we we put circles there for us to, to to for us to bring them back to society. That's a that's a, a good thing. Do so you you think they will they will go defend Mister? We are houses when they themselves know that it's going to help them. No. So so Nelson, let's let let's not be afraid. It is going to go smoothly. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I want to play this short video. <sighs> this is the point at which this process got paused under the previous administration. How much do we need to retrieve the assets? How much do we need to recover assets? Government assets. How much do we have is stolen assets in the first place, and how much do we need? Now I want you to listen to, 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 to watch this uh, this this video here. Just just a quick one. We also want to use the medium to question employees, private individuals, and former officials of government who are in position of possession of government properties to surrender them to the tax force. On this note, the tax force is granted ten days grace period, commencing March twenty second to March thirty first. 2024 we also want to use the medium to question employees, private individuals, and former officials of government who are in position of possession of government properties to surrender them to the tax force. On this note, the tax force is granted 10 days grace period from employees, former officials, and private individuals who are being seen through illegal means. The pledge to the people of Liberia and this government that we will perform fair responsibility to its maximum. In consonant with the law, we will be fearless, robust, drastic, and strong. In execution of our duties, no question or questions. That's why this or our formal portfolio 
will be exempted, as the full weight of the law will not be selected in its application. Our minister, the single ladies and gentlemen of the press, to hit the ground running, the tax law has commenced the process of property retrieval from employees. You know, uh, it's important. No um, one will be excluded. No one will be excluded, and all of that. These are the other aspects of it. No one will be as, as excluded, and so forth. But there's a portion there where he said they need 1.9 million. 1.9 million to kickstart this process. Now let, let, let's hear from you, uh, uh, Bella. Let, let, let's hear your take on this issue. A, a very a very strong statement, Nessing. And I think I want to begin like this. The statement is very strong. And we want to believe that President Joseph Newman Boaga mean well for this country, for Liberia. And I don't just want because we have heard people reading statement, statement being strong, we not be limited, we will do mm -hmm. this and that, and at the end of the day, it perpetually down. We saw that from the previous government. But like I, like I said, there is an administration, and there is not a regime. And we're going to see a lot of progress. You talk about the amount being shared. I think when I listened to Arthur Johnson, who was the lead investigation last year, and I mean, the previous government assets recovery team, you talk about the, the will, some of the business things that makes them to not achieve that asset recovery was about the will and the money that was not providing them. And it really mm. was going after some people within government that they think they had some, some linkage with certain assets. It brought some, some issues that he felt very unprotected, so he has to resign. So what we want to say is this government has already constitution and uh, an asset recovery thing, which is a very good thing. And we hearing Councillor Martin telling us that they will not be limited. We're talking about going to garages, right? That was, it speaks well because some of the assets has been uh, mostly manufacturing in garage. People like doing all of the funny, funny thing to make it appear different. So I think it's a very good thing. But there's issues I've always asked myself. You talk about security. I think that are formality leading to these things, and they have Tony name. That Tony name will not just come up. They're going to play their card very well before bringing on the turning or publishing the turning to you, journalists or whatever. Even they're going to publish it, right? There will formality. There will be formality. They excuse about security, security. Labor has security, and that is why I don't understand sometimes in my mind that we sometimes question the security that we have and not looking at previous things that have been happening. When you talk about security wars, mm -hmm. it brings me to, yeah, when you talk about security wars, it also brings me to to maybe say that, oh, is Nelson believing that we don't have the kind of security to arrest people in in, 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 in Liberia? I want to say this, take it from me, this statement that has been made by the, the head, you're going to mm -hmm. see political party, especially the CDC, I don't want to say opposition political party. They're going to come out another press release in debugging or saying that the, 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 the asset recovery, because they said it has a limit and they were not going to go to adding, I mean, the 12 year, all of the stuff. They're going to start from what they have in here. And I understand, yeah. understand that they're going to have, they're going to start from the sixth year, which the CDC will see as a threat or as a okay. vision in their mind, right? And there are people in the government who even work in the CDC led government. So we should not forget to know that if even you are part of any assets that, that has been linked or that has been alleged, somehow you're going to be investigated. Out of, you. You're going to be taken out of the government and investigated. So people should not see like wish hunt. And like Thank I said, you. you're not going to be wish hunt. That issue about, to conclude quick, that issue about not being fearless and we're going to go after anybody. No, no, he said they're going to be fearless. fearless. He said they're going yeah, to be that place that be, uh, that going that be holistic. That mm. be that be holistic and let it be done void of and you know people being Thank attached you, to political activity. But I know they're gonna make progress. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. We're gonna to move to uh make it on. Uh Samuel Kokar is, is saying that you should change the battery in your fire extinguisher. <laughs> 
No, I think he is hearing sound from the background. Uh, 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 he's, 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 he's speaking to, 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 to Bila. He said Bila should change the battery in the fire extinguisher. He made the same <laughs> comment yesterday as well, so I don't know. Yeah, so, but, but let's hear from you, uh, Mikhail. <clears throat> well, uh, thank you again, guys. Yeah, you know, the, I was listening to the the uh, the access recording team here today when you were in studio. You yeah. know, with the with the with our big brother. Then. Hmm. And one thing he said that I think from that whole thing was for the access recovery team to be successful, we need all Liberians. We need everybody here on deck to make the job successful for Liberia as a country. And the man said we people we need people all over the world. They even going to go ask European Union to help them. They will add America's security to be with them in the process. And they will add every Liberian. If you know somebody who doing something, who stole Liberian people money, who have property all over the world, they will need for you to come and give them some of the evidence. Then somebody will ask him what would be, you know, that compensation if they do that, what would be the protections and all that. Those questions were asked today. And the man went ahead and answered all those questions. Which in my mind, one of the things is we Liberian, we gotta desist from protecting roles. Though God don't mean good for your children's future, for your next generations, people who sit in government power and allocate resources towards they and their family, they and their family alone, they don't mean well for the country. And Liberia has over 5.5 million people. How can 10,000 people enjoy the whole country economy or resources? So when the guy said we need Liberia and every Liberian to work and get this thing done, we need it. And one thing that yet the past government completely from continually is why are we not going after our previous government, like Eddie Jones led government for the 12 years? Well, you advocating you know, those things to people who didn't have power to do it. You had the power, you were sitting right there. You had the privileges and everything you need to go after the people right handed. And when you are running campaign, everybody said Eddie Jones said your government was the most corrupt government in the history of Liberia. They regarding William Aratova, William V. S. I mean, just name them. You understand? If you make those statements coming to power in country like Liberia, what will your help to the country? Instead, you turn around and the, the same very thing you're accusing the people of, even more than you, you thought it did. So why are you mad at Boaca when you want to start with you? You cannot teach the man where to start investigation from. Now, okay. when after the statute of limitation, if you want Joseph Boaca government to go as far as JJ Robertson, what you need to be advocating for right now in the legislature is get rid of the statute of limitation law that like stop the government from doing that job. So, for example, if we start investigating FPRC and go as far back as Eddie Johnson's done, so we can follow that trail all the way until catch a live man on the bus. So, if we do those things, I think mm. CDC will start the wish them, the wish them, whatever need to give into themselves. They will start that noise, but they're not making the advocates that so be making right now. You cannot stop the Joseph Boakai or what he had decided on for a government to do. This is Boakai government. This is not CDC government. You're not going to detect to them what they have to do. Joseph Boakai has set up his team, and the team is even requesting the government to approve $1.9 million budgets for them. Look, I need tools to work with. You cannot just appoint a man and abandon him to go. It would be the same instance we have in Georgia administration when they set up their own investigative or committee that didn't go nowhere because the man complained, well, why I got to work with? The person I abandoned us, the government I abandoned us, we got nothing to work with. And, and looking at LCC, like I always say, I don't even know why they did. You understand? Now, this gov this uh, asset recovery team is starting now looking back to bring some experts on to help them do the job. Now, my question that I didn't hear nobody asked today was, are you going to pay those people you're asking them to come on to do the job? And we still got LAC sitting there that'll be taking pay, GAC taking pay. I, I, how, how are you going to do this? Are we going to be asking donors to pay those experts who want to bring them on to help us do this job? Those questions are staying in limbo to be answered. 
when it comes to the financial aspect of Liberia. And number two, those things cannot happen without proper justice. Thank you. We will, we will need a correct code, a criminal code. I think this is a criminal matter. We need a criminal code so it will accuse nursing or stealing Liberian people uh, or, or resources and we convict you of that crime by giving all the evidence. We need to take you to that court right away to be investigated and to be punished quickly. Because the Bible says when crime is when crime stay too long to be punished, people think that it's okay to commit crime. So once we're doing the putting it down and there's no investigation or we're not getting the answer we want as a country, it will be a different ball game. So we need every Liberian to work with the access recovery team, get every information you have. Don't go fight for anybody because they're taking out their property away from them. It's your right. That's the money for you and your future generations. So work for this thing, work with this thing to make Liberia better. We got to start from somewhere. If we don't begin from somewhere, we'll go nowhere. So we got to set the, the, the premise for this government, let me say for the entire country to follow, come next government. So that's that, that lay out the, the country so the people can walk on and do what they have to do. Let's support them whatever way possible as a country. Well, thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Mikael. And, and this is important. Uh, we can, we can, we can only because at the end of the day, we can only hope for the best to be done, man. Because uh, if the asset recovery team succeeds, it's gonna be to the benefit of the country. And by extension, every single person, one way or the other, is gonna benefit from the success of the asset recovery team. That's why it's important to give them uh, the necessary. Um, support and all of that um so yes to give them the support and everything so uh so let's do this today the national disaster management agency made uh, sent out a very very shocking message very shocking message just the other day, we were uh, we were having a conversation. We were having a conversation around um, this process, right? And um, what Liberians go through. Of recent, this the, the the issue of flooding has been a very serious one. Flooding situation has affected several parts of the country. Um, and there were media reports from 2019, 2020, 2021, it kept increasing. I, I remember at some point, the number of Liberians who got homeless rose to 22,000 in a year. It was uh, 2019. 22,000 flooding situation. Now, even as we speak, there are parts of Monrovia, like you see here now mm -hmm. on the street. There are parts of Monrovia. Where you see there is Broad Street. Jesus. I own Broad Street there. Wow. But there are parts of Monrovia and this environment that are even worse than what you see on the street there. You talk about the Clara Town, the Vile Town area. You want to talk about parts of, uh, I mean, this is going across. And today the disaster management agency says something that caught the attention of a lot of people. They said that this year, flooding have been taking place and all of that has been happening here, happening there and stuff like that. But over 10,000 persons who fall prey to windstorm, to flooding, and coastal er uh, erosion. So, what they are saying to Liberians is that we should brace ourselves. Liberians should brace uh, uh, Liberians should brace themselves. One hundred ninety-eight homes were damaged in Guapulu. And in Bong County, Bong and Nima counties, respectively, due to these natural disaster situations. 
And not just that, approximately 1,863 persons or people have suffered injuries. You know, and, and, and this, this is alarming because at the end of the day, you want to take into consideration a country like Liberia, where we stand, uh, our capacity to handle na uh, natural disaster issues, natural disaster situations. I mean, where do you think we can start this whole thing from? With, with what's coming from the disaster management agency? Now, these are the people who are trained to either predict and find a solution in case of a disaster. They are saying that it's going to be tough. It's going to be rough. Liberians should brace themselves for flawed and other natural disasters. Now, what can we do at this point? How can we work around this thing? Liberia is, 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 is one of those countries that have really not been in the middle of most of these uh, natural disaster situations. The fact that this is coming our way so hard. What do you think even the national government should be doing at this point? Let, let's start with you, Rudolf, and then we move to our next talking point. Um, yes, Nelson, this is a very good topic. You know, the thing is, I, I mean, most of the issues we have that 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 uh, that, 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 that kind of kind of result to flooding in Liberia. I mean, it's, 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 it's not just on weather, right? It's about, uh -huh. our, it's, it's about our system of drainage. Nelson, nowadays, in the, the heart of Morovia, most of the drainages are blocked with dirt and a lot of other things. You see, like, Broad Street flooding, it's not, not because, oh, we, we got bad weather and it rains every time. We don't have good drainages. The ones that we have, they are all blocked. And I think from the from what what we have uh, seen the uh, the 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 kind of job being done by the M M MCC, I think they are, are doing good. And I think what the, the the government needs to do, which cannot be achieved in this short period of time, is to I mean maybe relay out the city because Nelson, the city is congested. The layout is not even good. But this this cannot not happen in one or two. Two or, or, or even three years. So I think they have to relay out and maybe build new drainage systems. That's the that's the the that's the only way. But but for now, now what they can do, I, I mean what they, they are or what they, they have the power to, to do now is just to is just to, to, to clean. I would I would I would say that. Clean up. I, 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 I want us to watch a portion of this uh here. Let's so take a look. It's a truck on Martin Allen. No high representative from I want to use this medium to express that. So perform individuals and former official of government. Um sorry guys, uh I think this is the wrong this is the wrong uh that's the wrong video. Okay. On Saturday, March 16, 2024, reports from Bakuru, Bon County, Bon and Lima County show that windstorms have caused widespread damages to 298 homes, wandering over a thousand people. The government of Liberia, through the National Disaster Management Agency, Dispatch a team of respondents to work along with local authorities in this county to ascertain the gravity of the situation. The team observed in Wiswatam, Bakuru, Jamble, Raimo, and Peter in Bon County, and Zoblebo in Lima County. Several homes were entirely or partially destroyed as a result of heavy windstorm, leaving many especially women and children homeless. A video data from Bakuru shows that out of 101 homes, 52 have been badly damaged, 
while for the nine were partially damaged. Thus indicate that all of in the two wounds, for the five having badly damaged, while 37 were partially damaged. Lima County reports that all of 37 affected structures in the eight in Lima County. In total, it can be established that 1,863 people were affected with two pressing sustaining serious injuries in those counties. Our investigation also reveals that the windstorm also devastated four critical structures. Efforts are being made by the government through the National Disaster Management Agency to address the humanitarian needs of affected population. The President, His Excellency Jose Mohamed Wade, repeats the National Disaster Management Agency wants to state this as an early warning that based on the World Bank Group Climate Breaks Profile 2024, 24 for Liberia, predicting that rainfall pattern this year will increase extremely, accompanied by windstorm and the one meter sea level rise, which are expected to pose to pose future health hazard related to floor impacts, agriculture use, disease outbreak, critical infrastructure for water, sanitation, hygiene, and may well as lead to human injuries and the laws of life. The public is advised to be alert. Venerable communities along the coast of Liberia are advised to also be alert for coastal erosion as a result of rising sea levels. Based on so let's 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 hold it at that. Um... Okay, be that you can come in. Um, I, I think I think we. I'm trying to get something coming through here. Yeah, I think I think when you're listening to the head of that agency, it, it, it raises an alarm. An alarm that we as people and the government should do something about. And. I want to believe that they should carry on some level of collaboration by this time. Um, working with the EPA because in Liberia, when you look at flooding, it's mostly about people being to water erosion growing and not necessarily looking at the future aspect of the future embarrassment of some of these things. The EPA should definitely work in line with them to accomplish some of these things. So we as country and the government should try to put method. I don't know the budget of that agency, but I think it has to be a little bit equipped in terms of the statistics he giving, in terms of handling some of those houses that has been burned and some of the houses that are, that was damaged most definitely because they are there as a requisite authority agency to deal with some of those things. So uh, we want to urge the, the Boaga administration to please look at that aspect because he's raising alarm. It's, it's an alarm for we as country to, to be more aware of ourselves and the government should do something in our sector. The EPA should work with them, like I said previously, to tackle some of those uh, people that I can... Because next thing you see, like Rudolph said, in central Morovia, the play is very congested in a funny manner. Even when you're walking, some part of Brush Hill or some of those streets you can admit, when you're working, you gotta see uh, a fizzy coming out of the ground. Those are basic reasons of which some of these things happen. People build into places that they shouldn't be building, right? So at the end of the day, we're gonna be experiencing flooding and it's gonna be something that people have this way calm down and so that okay. stuff. The, thing is the government should mostly look at that sector so as to prevent some of those things. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and, and, and this is important, um, especially the prediction that they were making, you know, and, and talking about 10,000 people to fall prey to flooding, sending, sending a, a, a warning to those along the coastal belt, this is alarming. 
this is alarming because in the after years when we experienced these situations, there wasn't any um, warning of such. But the fact that this is coming at this time, it speaks volume. Uh, let, let's hear your take on this, Mikael, and then um, we try to wrap up on this one. Well, you know, nursing, one of the, the, the major problems that we always have since the war in Liberia, where some of grew up through, especially the Morovia era, have been overpopulations. And okay. the second thing has been zoning issues, you know, zoning audiences and all that. And, you know, Liberia, people go around, you know, feeling the swampy area with mud, with bag and all that, and build it up to build a house. And mm -hmm. what they always don't do is, they don't go ahead to open waterway for that water they just suppressed, that went somewhere and sitting there, that always trying to find a way to miss some damage somewhere for that water to smoothly pass and go somewhere else. There's nothing like that. There were statistics in, I think when I was in, instead of in Polytechnic back then, I was doing civil engineering in Liberia. I think we wrote paper about that and all. There were statistics, I think 2009 and 2010, that if Liberia continues to fill out the field of very swamp around Morovia mm -hmm. and not opening water, we one day we'll just wake up, the whole Morovia will be on the water because it can't keep suppressing the, the water and there's nowhere to go. And there were even Chinese company contacted to come and, and do the work. I think the agreement fell on anything we found under the, the lagoon or anywhere here, the swampy area, we're going to take it for ourselves. And they said, no, 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 the Liberian government said, no, 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 we can't agree on that. And today, today, there's no way to, you know, to open the waterway to either go to the sea or go somewhere to go. But keep in mind, the second thing everybody has already said, it, Liberia has a problem that we need now just one entity to deal with. We need public works to lead the front, number one. We need water and sewer to follow. We need the EPA to follow. And we need other government agencies that relate to that issues. Moreover, already congested. Open the drainage all over the country. May waterway, you know, build cat bases. You know, I mean, that's I, I'm into engineering. I got my degree in engineering in America. That's what we do. Even around the city of Detroit, Michigan, where I live, that's what we do every day. We go down the city of Detroit. We are cleaning, you know, the drainage system consistently. Think about the developed world. Up to this day, they stay working on the drainage system. Keep cleaning those things, making sure that it's not black. If it's black, they pay people go there clean it. But Morovia don't have those things. See the water on Broad Street. Morovia supposed that particular area of Liberia is supposed to be well built because they're where they say they started from. So there should be a correct drainage system all over. Under there to push the water right back into the lagoon, into the sea, and everywhere around the city. Not to be in the city center looking like that. What that said, what that speak loud is, uh, uh, uh public works not doing a job. Water and sewer not, not opening no drainages, and there's too, too many things going on on the ground that we're not addressing. Don't worry about pipe busting everywhere on Meglin Street, on Broad Street, on, uh, on on Asthma Street. I mean, these are things we're supposed to be looking at. So if we continue not to do those things, we'll continue to get this. And now that the government has been warned by the World Bank, like he was saying, what we need to start doing now is the government's got to start now investing into weather system in Liberia. Now, if, if, if there will be a heavy rain in the next two, three months, let it be announced to the certain part of Liberia that don't stay to the area if you're going to stay there be a light. That, that produced some sort of. Do you think the government needs to start start looking at investing some 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 money in that as in, in that area, uh, educating Liberians who will be, because this is serious. Yes. At the end of the day, natural disaster is is something that's inevitable. You, uh, you you can't escape it. You never know. Let me just hold you there, Nelson. Let me just hold you there. You know, I'm not going to compare Liberia with America. But there's assistance in the country that you know the people who who explain the weather, those the, the different weather group of people. Now, yeah. when, when something is about to happen here, the people always predict the weather. They might not be right because they're not God. And sometimes what they say don't happen, sometimes most of the time it do happen. What they do is if you live in in, in Southfield, like I live in the, the Detroit area, there's a city here they call Southfield. 
if you live in the Southview area, maybe two, three different, and say people who live in Southview, there will be heavy downpour or snow tomorrow or uh, in three days from now. Do not come at such a time of the day. The road will be bad. Don't drive out and all that. And if you have to drive for any reason, be careful and all that. So Liberia, now, I know Liberia not equipped to that level yet, but at least you can do the weather system. You can do the no, no, no. This, this you know. is important. Joseph yes. Tama, one of our followers in the comment section, is saying that the funding is lacking. Now, it, 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 it's, it's a very good plan you're talking about there, how yeah. to go about it and everything. But but let's look at the funding aspect. We we have a budget. You, you look at our national uh, national budget. The one yeah. for this year is mm -hmm. is not even up to seven hundred million. Since six hundred million, and, yeah. and 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 we had to cut down costs on a lot of things to even get to where we are. Now, but, if you're talking about this, mm -hmm. it's a good thing. Right. Not natural disaster, the prevention right. measures and everything. But let's look at funding. Is Liberia prepared in the first place? Are we in a position? Are, are we uh do we have what it takes to build up the kind of defense, whether it's education, whether it's investing in the human capacity or um equipment or what have you to, to, to get us to where we need to be when it comes to uh setting ourselves uh on path with respect to handling this issue? Nothing, you know, even in your own life, mm -hmm. you prioritize what is what is critical in your life and what is important in your life when you're living. Yeah. Now yeah. that the that is that the uh the 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 environmental people, I know the environmental people, what their name is the disaster people they, that the man just disaster did management it. agency. Okay. Yeah the disaster management people just get clear speech about this. This is human life. You know what I mean? We, there's life involved here, property involved here. We need to start prioritizing things that matter to the to, to us as a people. Now, if the weather going to be a problem for us, mm. then there are too many things that we can cut down on to prioritize this before our people be destroyed overnight. One that we got three, five thousand people have died in Liberia for things we could have set some prioritize in the long run, in the first place, for this not to happen. Like I'm saying, bring us start training some people to start you know explaining to people about this weather in two three weeks or two three days to come so people can be aware when they live into those places let government start giving warning let's start building a land system you know because if we don't prioritize that i know we don't have the money but we're not waiting to get a hundred million dollar or one billion dollar so start prioritizing why we affect you know and, and, and you yeah. have a point uh, yeah you know you you you, you have a point Mikael. Let, let me let me go to rudolph quickly but before doing that i gave a bit 20 seconds you want to inject quickly before we uh move to rudolph yeah thank you you see the better talk about education and i think we want all the the the, the disaster management agency now to take some level of education because you see the issue of education that you scratch nursing is lacking in all sectors of government. Sometimes the, the information is not reaching to the people. Yeah, we understand that government should do more in regards to funding and other stuff in preventing some of those um, calamity or whatsoever, thing, whatsoever way you might call it, uh, that we will have to encounter in the future. But education is lacking. Most in every sector of government, education is lacking. I think these things can be through jingo. These things can be through whatsoever means for our people to be educated on where are we going as a country, where are we, and what we what we intend to go. So I mean, the agency can do more awareness through viral radio stations. You know, and, 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 and it's important. Yeah, that that's a good point. But let let's let's look at it from from this aspect as well. Rudolph, and I'm coming to you on this. Um, in the midst of everything we're talking about, we displayed right. a photo from Central Monrovia where there was right. this serious flooding situation. Yeah. During the rainy season, this is the normal, uh, this is normal in parts of Monrovia, especially talking about the Clara Town. You know, th th there have been situations where cars will get. Uh, we get stuck in these kinds of flaws. Right. <laughs> the cars will get stuck. Immediately you enter there, you think it's a, you know, just a little stuff, but before you know it, 
it overshadows you. You stuck there. Now, and 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 and, and that's just for the flooding aspect. But you talk about windstorm. There are other natural disasters as well. Do, do, is there anything that you think the government can do, enforcement wise, policy wise, to be able to address some of those issues? Now, yes, we can come up here all day and talk about the politics. Oh, CDC, United Party, you know, and, and, and ANC and all of those things. Yes, I know that's what most times we're interested in, but this is serious. Yes, indeed. This politics is sad. Politics is sad. This is something that concerns all of us. The people who got affected in the three counties, Nima, uh, Bomi, and, and that of uh, the other county, those people, some of them were citizens, some of them were other part partisans. By the end of the day, Liberians were affected by this situation, which is very serious, and it's important that we, we talk about it. Is there anything you think the government needs to do? In terms yes, of nothing. Um, policy. Policy. And, 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 and just to end up on this one, Rudolph, we have had a situation where we have had a situation where uh, the Ministry of Public Works, for example, there will be a construction somewhere. And uh, maybe this person who's carrying on the construction is building in the alley or in the waterway, building on the drainage or what have you. The Ministry of Public Works goes and posts uh, a stop sign, stop notice, or what have you, instead of seeing the work being halted, that work will continue. In fact, it will move at a faster pace than you ever expected. Yes. Now, sure. let, 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 let's hear from you, Rudolph, on this aspect. You know, Nelson, this thing, uh, so I'm a first hand I'm a first hand victim of this thing, right? Okay. And the thing is, most time when these, these things are done, people who try to build in those like in a waterway and stuff like that mm -hmm. these people some sometimes they have connections at the ministry of public works so okay. even if 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 their neighbor try to sue them you will see people from that same ministry coming on their be on their behalf and 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 giving them the a pass to build in that in that that place so uh so back home i used to, used to live on 11th street our neighbor wanted to have built an upstairs building right in a very tight space so this is our house and then she went and then there was there was a lane in between her house and our house and i'm telling you about in central Mon monrovia in cinco and i mean we had issues because every rainy season time after she has built her her found, found Build her foundation, Nelson. Every rainy season time, we we our entire front yard will be flooded. We have to build so 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 we we ended up building our porch even higher up for the water not to get into our, our house. Okay, okay. But then we took this this case to the Ministry of, of Public Works. These people they had, I think they had someone within that ministry or, or stuff like that. Some and connection. Connection, yeah. So, I mean, so <laughs> your case wow. fell on, yeah. You know, yes. <laughs> but, but but this is serious. Is, is there anything you think serious. done differently here? Rudolph? Yes, Nelson. The thing is, we need so we need serious people, right? We need people who um, I would say people who love the country. That's that that's what I would, would say first. We need people occupying those ministries. To be people who I mean will be 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 fair and wanting to see a better country, irrespective of 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 their family shape or family line or what are you. Number two, Nelson, it would will shock you to know that if you you just take your your mark tomorrow hmm, and you just walk around in town and ask people what is Winston, more more people don't know it. So like my. Brother said, education, awareness needs to be done too, Nelson. Okay. Because we don't, don't have the funding to, I mean, to start empowering weather forecasters and stuff like, like that. So now what we can do, let's use use jingles, let's tell the people, let's educate them about these things. And 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 this report that you that you have, have just read, we need people to translate in the, the very dialects. To people, tell them what this is, is going to do and how best you think we can prepare for it when it, it comes. 
Because now, now there is no, there is no money to say we can stop it from happening. No, we cannot. So because yes. we cannot stop it, we we need more awareness. Yes, awareness. Let, let people get jingles in in you different know. in different dialects, and just you know just educate our our people for now while we work Thank on you. finding a lasting solution. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And, uh, you you, you want to come in quickly? Then we will go to the lines. Yeah, yeah. And one of the thing is. You know, building in the others, you know, the, the surveyor that will get in Liberia, they the one that cause most of the problem. You cannot be surveying people there. You're not telling them that this is added, this is waterway, this is this. Don't build it and keep selling the land to the people and, and knowing the fact that this not supposed to be happening. So those guys need to be going to court and some of them be jailed so they can start a kind of reckless way of selling land and giving space to people to build, just to care of people. Like, for example, nursing. That's why people dying from fire in Liberia or people losing their property in Liberia. Even if we have 100 fire truck in Liberia to go to the places for rescue, some of them will not even make it. The fire truck will surround our whole community and will never get to the houses. Because why? The way they build, they survey the place and the way the people build. No alley, nothing. I mean, it's just, it just sad. And Minister of Public Works, Lenson Man, everybody sitting there looking at it, people dying because of these things. And we just ignore it. How can a country be like that? For Liberia to move forward, it will take Liberians and people who are in power to do the least thing, the least thing for that country to get anywhere. And with the mindset we got, we got to desist from that. The water okay. thing that come, you already know is on the way. The people already told us what are our next steps? What can we do to prevent our people from dying? That's also what we're looking at right now. And, and this is serious. This is serious. Yes, They're predicting that 10,000 people, 10,000 people in Liberia will be affected. You know, and, and it's serious because even as we speak now, uh, there are people who are purchasing the swamp land. Yes. They'll purchase the swamp land, filling the swamp land. Yes. And they construct their homes. Yes. And 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 the way the thing works is that regardless of how much um 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 feeling you do to that particular place, the water will have to find its way out. Yes, it's, it's gonna have to find its way yeah. out. At yeah. the end of the day, you we get to where we are. But this is serious, and I'm I, I'm I'm hoping that the fact that there's an early warning. That the, um, the 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 government can take 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 this seriously, and uh, not wait for lots of lives again before um, coming on. And, and this is not about party politics or what have you. No, this is about the lives of the Liberian people. It's about what Liberians are going through, and what needs to be done. What is about what the government should do. It's about what the policies should be. It's about um, uh, what the enforcement and everything should be at this point. But let's let's take a few calls as we um, um, get ready to wrap up. Yes, we uh, let me let me put the numbers up zero triple five one zero one zero seven five, and I will put the WhatsApp up now so you make your contribution from here. Um, uh, we're so let me see if I can have this one up. Okay, so this is the WhatsApp right up here. You can uh, place a call there as well. And um, you'll be live. Okay, so let's hope we can have this one coming up here. And um, okay. So I think we have it up there. So zero triple five one zero one zero seven five is the number to call, and you'll be live on uh, the show tonight. And um, yes, so let's go to the lines and take a few calls, and then we wrap up. Hello, you're live. Your name and where you're calling from? Can you lower the volume of your radio, please? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. No, your, uh, your radio is still on. I'm hearing myself. Can you lower the volume of the radio or you just walk away from it? No, no, I am. Yes, sir. It's good to have you on. 
Thank you very much. This is Mr. E. Frederick Bay, Executive Chairman of Black Alley Patriotic Consciousness Association. Okay, Mr. Bay, it's good to have you on tonight, sir. I think you don't know why. Thank you very much for this uh, wonderful program. Oh, the issue here about the you know environmental situation is a two-way street. Hmm. The EPA has a lot to do. We don't see much coming from there. In fact, the mangroves that they you know talk about protecting and making sure that the species in there can can survive mm -hmm. have been mortgaged by people who very who work at the very uh, EPA. And these are things that we have gathered is true. They have refused to, to be robust in protecting the environment. And they, they have the budget, a huge budget. That's what, what you have there. And let it awareness, you said, awareness, free awareness, get these advocacy organizations, strike deal with them, share small money with them, community the community, and let the people be aware of the effect of this quote unquote climate change. If I'm going to Paris and coming from there, I'm playing and using taxpayers' money. And you come and sit here, and you know, you, there's no effect. The, 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 the people who reside in this strong area don't even know what's going on when it comes to protection. That, that's the first thing. The second thing is that Monrovia, you and I know for some of the thousand persons way back before we were even born. So they have a population of about six million residing, half of the population reside in Monrovia because there's this, uh, uh, you know, rural to urban migration that started immediately during the civil conflict. Lack of job opportunities in the rural areas, no internal alternative out there. So people migrate to Monrovia. There's the only safe haven that people believe. Even put a green, you gotta bring it from Banga Maniba to Monrovia. Those can be sold, but that's the way. So uh, to make much progress, there's a need to take a robust decision. One, just relocate this place, up, evacuate from here, let it remain commercial, you know, hub for the country. And create a, a new capital city, political capital city. Banga can be, you know, somewhere in the central hinterland can be, a, you know, a, a, a targeted. We can relocate there and, 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 and establish a new, like you have Abuja, you know, which is not a capital. Okay. Know, and you have, uh, yeah. So, in the case of that, there'll be flooding, there'll be this, or uh, he You remember one time the, the previous hey. government talked about relocation of people from West Point. Yeah, you know, the, and, yeah, and it's the serious. Highway, the yeah. Thank you. They can't be there. They are really, they are going back to their hero. Thank you, that, sir. That's, that's, that's not a suggestion. That's not a solution to Yes, it. sir. Thank you. Thank, thank, thanks yeah. a lot. Let's let's call you there and bring another person. And, and this is serious. Uh, hello, you're live and email. Where you call from? Yeah, uh, hello. Yes, sir. Let's hear you. My name is I'm calling from Winston, Scotland. Okay. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much for the show. Yeah, because <clears throat> you see, uh, the problem about Liberia, we're already making it our, our country not really building is that uh, uh, our leaders, they don't really know for the country in order, well, especially when it's to certain land business. Um, well, especially uh, in, in Liberia, individual personnel sort of be selling land, but all land belongs to the government. In my idea, what the government sort of do, anybody you want to pay off, you, you, you sort of go and register to the government, and the government and directly where you sort of pay off. But for, if you're just going to sell land to you and just be building any kind of way, you're not sort of building that. You see the point? Of, the you know, you know, this? you know, yeah. But, but again, um, it, it depends on the laws in the country and everything, you know. Mm. And and I know uh, most times we want to bring the, the Western country thing and, and all of that, but it depends on the laws in the country. Uh, uh, you know, a customary land ownership. There's a whole document to that to that effect. You know, people can own land in Liberia until we, it gets to that stage where the laws are changed. You know, that's mm -hmm. why it is. You know, that's yeah, exactly because, why it is. Because the whole thing, uh, in all the things to it, and uh, maybe individual person and uh, customary land in the end bar for individual person to own land because in those family people can own land over once the government to ruling the country people okay. to go by the government yeah thank you this, thank you sir yeah. thanks a lot let's uh take the last uh two calls and then we wrap up hello are you here hello we get this person hello Hello. Yeah, please go ahead quickly. Let's hear you. Yeah, my name is Peter. I'm speaking from Johnsonville. Okay. But, uh, 
<laughs> if you have a wallet and you like you uh, will squarely blame uh if you have a disaster like uh and the like war taking over our country mm-hmm. will squarely blame uh the EPA will squarely blame uh public web ministry and disaster management as well. The government is paying uh the disaster management workers to inspect things they should put in place instead of disaster taking place in the country. When it comes to EPA, EPA needs to stop those that build it on, on web land as well. Like for typical example, if you check on the SKD Boulevard, mm-hmm. you can hear that from police and, and police ballot belt getting on the soccer move community. That whole wetland are then taken off by people. They build it in the swamp. And in, in Nigeria, people pay for that, that, that the, 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 the trees that are in the swamp, they, they are that they are paying for it and planting it in the swamp but our people here are cut those trees okay. and they are building the EPA is not doing nothing about it. Thank you. Even the national or uh, public work is not doing nothing about it. They are trying people to build it. Thank so, you, sir. If public work can be checked on, on the bypass there, when you come from Sehom and you go on the bypass, you go in uh, to central Morovia, that place is flawless and it's right there. The house is standing right on the BMC. The okay. people on that place, and only because that house is there and that lovely people build that place, don't fear to open that drainage for the water to go down. So, we hold our government officials squarely, those government agencies that are responsible for those, uh, 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 need to take action against the people. Johnny, you are the Thank you. Thank market. you, sir. You see, Seti Brella go in. So how those things would not let's, affect our country? Yeah, let, let, let's let's hold you there. Thank you very much, sir. Um, we have to go and um, and this is serious. Uh, you know, most times we talk the politics, but at the end of the day, these are issues that are affecting the everyday lives of Liberians, the the activities. And it's just important that um, national government get to look at these issues. Um, so let's let's do our closing. Let's do our closing, and then we can start with you, Bila, and then Rudolph, and then yeah. Well, thank you. I think it was a good show, and uh, we can keep strengthening these issues, our politics that are issues affecting our people. We should always look at these things primarily and always talk about it. And it was a good show. One of the color talk about whiteness. I think the whiteness show that only talk and stop to the issue of jingle and talk about civil society organization that believe in those sectors because they have various activist grouping out there that believe in the sectors. I think those agencies can look at them and give them a certain level of responsibility. They don't want much. You can give them the money to carry on a wedding in burial era as to uh, educating our people. Education is less in Liberia, and I think we should strengthen education about some of these things. We know the funding may not be there, but we should know what is ahead of. It was a great show. Honestly, thanks to uh, all of the co panelists Rudolph and uh, Mecca One. <laughs> I think it was a good show. Thank you, Nelson. It's like you're struggling with. <laughs> you, 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 so you, you got it this time. You, 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 you got it. You got it. I'm on this because you want a better name. Oh, yeah, but, but on a serious note, on a serious note, what, what's going on with your internet, Bila? The internet, I think, like Miami internet. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you, you Bila? I'm, I'm good. I'm good from this angle. Bro. Oh, that angle, eh? Okay, well, I understand. But we have let's hear you. And I'm getting you guys very clear. Yes, nice thing. Uh, this was a good show, obviously. I mean, even though though we went a little bit outside of what we normally talk about today, you know, like uh, and but but it was a, a good twist, you know, because we come here every day, we discuss politics, we discuss what is going on politically, 
and sometimes i mean we forget about the actual things that are affecting our people so yes it was good that we were able to bring this up and we discussed it and we made some proposals that if government is listening maybe they can start to take actions and yes we hope for the best for our people and oh nelson you know last night i uh I was trying to say something in my my opening, but I left it out. So I'm going to say it tonight in my closing. Okay. You know, Nelson, we we all witnessed the game yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you know, mean, Nigeria and uh, <laughs> yes, I, I didn't watch it. Djibouti. Djibouti. You know, Nelson. Um, it's it's funny that we had a footballing president and we didn't didn't see our country winning like that. Nobody like, didn't win game. But now, but now we have President Barker. Now see, this is a sign. Man, well, this is a sign that JMB will succeed. Is that the first game on our JMB? Yes. yes. That, yeah, that, that was the thing. Yeah. And like, we won her first soccer match. Yes. Zero. Nelson, that's a sign. Of Nelson. Honestly, you know, I, let's I see. Don't, don't, bring, don't bring politics in soccer. All the real world, whatever. You, 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 you are trying. Yeah, we try to. You know, so Nelson, I see us going to the AFCON on a JMB first. I mean, that one, I have quality thing. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna place as a woo. <laughs> like, we're gonna win World Cup. Anyway, it's, it's good to dream big, but, though. But, but let's see, like, we're always studying history, though. Don't say that. <laughs> no, but the thing is, you know, our first game, let go, let's go back in history. The okay. first game when Mr. We had to, to power, how did it go? Uh, we lost. The first game when Madame Sadiq took power, her first and second turn, how did it go? This is a messiah that we have just... Okay, just, just thank, thank you. My man, thank my you. friend, even was up. La Bella, Nelson, La Bella is about to work. We love, we love it's okay. Every sector yeah. is about to work. We love, we love it's okay. Every department is going to move. I'm telling you. The sports <laughs> and everything, Nelson. <laughs> but guys, thank you. It was a good show. <laughs> That's how you make it on. Well, uh, next thing I would say thank you, Tanya. People were sleeping like bro, so I'll be in bed right now sleeping, but you're always taking your time to come here and make the case for Liberia. You know, Liberia is the only country we have. No matter where we go in this war, we can go to Venezuela, wherever we want to go. The one place we all can end up is Liberia, you know. So that's way for our country. Whatever way possible we can, you know, politics cannot divide us. We only come up we have is Liberia. Uh -huh. So whether you come here from CDC, you from whatever party, our come up should be Liberia should be developed for our people, a good place for people to live for our future generations. So I mean that to say, whatever we are discussed tonight is important to the country of Liberia. We had to hold people accountable for our resources. Liberia and Nigeria are one man country. We are 5.5 million people. We all need to partake in our economy. We can't be spectators in our own home, in our own economy. The population got to enjoy something. I know everybody not going to be on the top, but at least let something get down to the common man to know that they were once born in a country that care for them and they're responsible for them. You know, it's not be, it's not hard to do. We just need to set a system that way we assist system is very good. It had to come, but when we work with it, it, it made things done in an orderly manner. And when it comes to this, uh, uh, you know, this uh, weather thing or the thing that happening around the world now, you're talking about uh, global warming. Every day, the world is announcing this thing. And not only the Western world is going to happen to, it's going to go down the line all over the world. Now Liberia is encountering, you know, their own right now. What can we do? This is very important. We need to relocate this city. Moravia is too congested. We can't just be sick. Moravia is not laid out engineeringly. Moravia is not laid out at all, at all, at all. Even the water and sewer in Moravia, you don't even go to pass Congo town. That's shame. And we say, yeah, we're talking about we got country. So these are the things we need to be focusing on. To at least either move the city to Banga, or tap it out and lay the city out before we even start doing anything. So at least Liberia can get somewhere. But Morovia, where it is right now, it would take millions and billions and billions of dollars to get our country. And one of the ways we'll do it is the assets recovery team. 
if people can start accounting for government things and what belong to the state belong to the state, we start developing our country <laughs> for all to get to those places will be very, 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 very difficult. So let's start holding each other accountable. And thank you for the show. And thank you everyone for watching every time we come here. We thank you for your contribution. I thank my, you know, my friends and brethren that are sitting here that will try to analyze the issues at best to our knowledge. Thank you guys, my man. Have a wonderful night and there was a wonderful yeah. show. Thank you. Uh, one thing, thanks again. One thing quickly before we go. Uh, one thing quickly before we go. Uh, we... Nazim, 20 seconds. Okay. You know that you've been one person, one eloquent and transparent and uh, you come on the platform we talk about country but there is the one thing I've always want you to make clarity and say what live after his man when it's not clarified will always be something that people are going to say is you what is the issue about the lady who sent the money last time we haven't got that accountability <laughs> <Everybody knew me. laughs> What kind of lady, my man? I, I, mean, I don't know. That, that that man what, what, what kind of lady? That, that ain't talking about. <laughs> kind of lady? Yeah, you know, you know? Which, which lady the man talking about? <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. you know, you're now you're saying you're off, off air. <laughs> Just so you know how to come up with No, no, no. The, the, the man is not off air. I, I, I want to have an understanding <laughs> of what, what, what the guy is talking about. Like, oh, the, that you didn't see you were talking? Oh, I may have picked you. Oh. <laughs> I see you was joking. That broke like a full bar wheel. He put a set of people. You sure you are joking? I may have checked it. So, Nelson, what's about the, 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 the info that somebody came to my house and told me about you? Traveling. Come on, come on. You you guys want to start making up issues, so I will just remove you one after another. You see, Peter, come Right, <laughs> you beat this thing. You keep going on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say it was a great show, man, and um, looking forward to being here tomorrow. We should have had a guest today, but uh, we started up late. Who is um, this guest? Maybe they'll be here tomorrow, right? That yeah, do some, some, we will some take a look at well. the security sector. Um, Who is this guest? Yeah. Nelson? So we we're gonna have the rest of the discussion in the background. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but again, I want to say thanks to everyone, and uh, we look forward to having a great show here tomorrow. Peter, thanks a lot. You can remain there at the back, and um, thank you for being here, uh, Rudolph. I appreciate you, Mikael. Thanks for being here as well. And let's hope we can have a great show tomorrow. And until we come away again, folks, have a good night, and uh, bye bye for now. With the and your boy, Friday, the South and Charging.